Good morning. Okay, when I got out of bed this morning, as happened yesterday, I didn't realize that I was going to be doing the video at 4.44 again. Uh, it's not till I get to the meditation room and uh, and the idea comes to me, no, do it this morning. Don't wait till this afternoon. So that's exactly what I'm doing. The title for today is Equinox, The Balancing of Earth Energies. As I held the globe in my hands in the meditation room earlier, I realized that we are at the point of the fall-spring equinox. Of course, that means that there is an equal amount of light and dark, day and night. Yes, this happens twice each year, in March and September. Some people always seem to make a big deal out of these reoccurring seasons, moon phases, solstices, etc. Focus is also placed on planetary and galactic alignments. Whether these things are meaningful or as meaningful as some would insist is debatable. One thing that is not debatable, however, is that we definitely need more balance on our planet. We have been way out of balance. I believe that this is happening for us as cosmic energies and divine intentions are coming into play more and more. And as I set up to do the video this morning, <laughs> the idea came to me, put the globe in the, in the picture. So, <laughs> there you see the globe, and it's facing, if you can look where I'm pointing, it's facing an area of the world, oh yeah, wow, <laughs> it's facing an area of the world, right here is Indonesia and Australia and uh, New Guinea, uh, uh, Malaysia, Philippines. This is an area of the world that's very interesting. I had lunch the other morning with uh, a friend of mine, or supper actually, it was Friday night, uh, with a friend of mine uh, who was telling me about his trip to Bali. And he said that when he was in Bali, there was a channeled message given that Bali is the navel or the center of the earth. And I heard that recently as well, that someone said that Java, which is right next to Bali, is the center of the earth, and that those, of course, are in Indonesia. And I point that out because, of course, I've been doing a lot of research in regard to the OPPT and Swiss Indo and people's plans to help bring the world into more into balance. And uh, I'm impressed with some of the spiritual acumen of this Mr. Sino character, individual, who is known as M1, or the controller of finances and currencies, the controller of basically the guy that controls the world's wealth. Now, some, of course, would debate that. <laughs> uh, lots of things right now are debatable. But one of the things that is not debatable, as I said, is that we've been out of balance, and especially in our financial system, where there has been a system of slavery, and everyone, including the Illuminati, including the dark forces, have been out of balance. And it's time for all of us to come into a place of greater balance. And that seems to be, as I can understand what I'm looking at, and sometimes I can't as easily, but it seems that Mr. Sino wants to bring the economic system into greater balance so that the people's wealth is returned to us. I mean, all of us. Now, that's not going to happen overnight. Can't. I mean, it took a long time to get out of balance. But there is demonstrable energies that are happening, things that are happening on, the, on Earth, on our planet, that would indicate a greater awareness of the need for balance. 
And let me add that there's a need for focus. There's a need to be focused on our intention to come out of bondage, our intention to be liberated, our intention to forgive and forget, our intention to remember who we are, our intention to bring our lives into greater focus and greater balance between the dark and the light aspects of ourselves. And as we do that individually, as we integrate the light and the dark, the positive and the negative, the masculine and the feminine, as we integrate these polarities within ourselves, we come into greater harmony. And that's my intention, and I believe a lot of people's intention for our world, to come into greater harmony with each other. We will not have peace on earth until the issues of imbalance are addressed, including the injustices, including the lies, including all of the, the games that people play to keep the status quo in place, to be able to, for some people to rob other people and feel that they are legally justified, if not <laughs> somehow morally justified because of the divine right of kings. And it's interesting that Mr. Sino is is known in his culture as the King of Kings, and that is traced back to Solomon's temple, to David, King David and King Solomon. They actually trace it back to not something in the East, but something that's considered in the West, but it's the crossroads, the, the Near East or the Middle East. It's the crossroads where the East and the, and the West meet, out of which comes the religion of Judaism, the religion of Christianity, and the religion of Islam, which are the three main religions of the world. And of course, Buddhism and, and Hinduism are the other two. The, they're the quintessential religions, if you will, the five religions of the world that have left their mark and their imprint on people around the planet. And there's a cross-pollinization between those religions going on right now where Christians are studying Buddhism, and Buddhists may be studying Christianity, and Hinduism brings them all together, and, and Jews are, are just going into philosophies and, and mind sciences, and, uh, and the Islamic faith is waging war to bring... It's, it, Islam, again, is a religion of peace. I know it's not always seen that way, but it is. It is. It's about harmony. The focus is about balance. And so it's appropriate this morning that I talk to you about this equinox thing, about the fact that for today, our focus is on the balance between the light and the dark, the balance between the day and the night, and not just globally, but in our individual being, so that we come into harmony with ourselves. Because face it, folks, if we are out of harmony inside of us as a collective, as humanity, it's going to be manifested in the world. It always has. It always has. When we are ignorant of who we are, when we have forgotten that we are connected each to the other and to everything in existence, that there is nothing isolated, that it's all one, and that there's one law ultimately that prevails on the earth, and that is the law of one, of one creator, of one God, of one religion, of one world. You say, Ron, you're talking like the New World Order people. Well, the separation consciousness of my religion is better than your religion. My nation is better than your nation. My beliefs and philosophy is better than yours. I mean, this is not balance, folks. This is not balanced because you're not taking into account that your position, whatever it is, is from a particular point of view. And the other person's idea is from their point of view. And if you were standing where they are, you'd see what they're seeing. Common sense. I mean, common sense. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to get this. We each see from wherever we're standing, from whatever point of view we are living in. 
and our perceptions are our perceptions are influenced by the place in which we are standing which is why again that I drew attention to this navel of the world it's the place where everything it's the center where everything balances around it so I find it appropriate that Indonesia and the Swiss Indo may may be at the center of some of the changes the geopolitical changes and the economic changes is we're going to be experiencing together on our planet. Now, I know that Indonesia and Mr. Sino are not going to do this alone. I know it's going to take a worldwide effort. It's going to take people coming together from all over the planet, visionaries from every religion and every culture that are willing and able to work together, together, and to develop compassionate communication methods for understanding and talking to each other so that we don't put each other down and, and to try to eliminate the other but we rather try to integrate the best from each of our cultures and each of our religions and that we try to bring wisdom into this whole thing and and harmony and balance into this whole thing just as the as the equinox represents to us it represents a balancing, a balancing of polarities. We're not moving out of duality. Get over it. If we move out of duality, we annihilate creation. Physical creation requires polarity. It requires it. It's a sine qua non, a not without which. We don't have physical manifestation or molecular or atomic manifestation without the dance between the positive and the negative, between the light and the dark, between the masculine and the feminine. Everything grinds to a halt if you don't have this dance. The dance is the center of all creation. All creation begins with the separation of the light from the dark, and the light he called day, and the dark he called night, and the morning and the evening were the first day. Okay, that's creation in a nutshell, if you grasp it. If you can grasp it, that's what's it's being talked about there. It's the separation so that we can have the contrast necessary to have points of view, or from the divine perspective, points to view. For the divine in each of us is viewing creation through our eyes, through our experience. And it's a beautiful thing if you allow it to be and you stop focusing on the egocentric point of view that says my point of view is the right one. Where I'm standing, that's where we all need to be standing. Well, in a sense, we all need to be standing everywhere. Because, in fact, if we are all interconnected, we are each everywhere. We are each all over, not only the planet, but all over the solar system, all over the galaxy, all over the cosmos. In the multiverses and universes that exist, we are there. We are part of the creator and part of creation. Can you allow yourself to expand to that consciousness, to move into that higher dimensional reality. It's not escaping to some never never land in airy fairyville. It's not getting out of physical creation that some people seem to want. There's nothing wrong with physicality, folks. The only thing that has to happen is we need to restore balance and harmony. We need to bring the dance back in and stop the dueling. That's the duality that needs to end. The polarization of the masculine and feminine, where men and women take on the roles of fighting each other for control and each wanting to, to dominate the other. But what we really want is to each be heard and honored and recognized for our individual contribution to the whole. 
when we get to that point, we have wisdom. We have the wisdom that can bring all of the knowledge that we've accumulated into a greater balancing perspective. And we realize that knowledge is just information. And we are informing the world that we want harmony. We want peace. We don't want the imbalance of the rich dominating the poor and literally draining all of the value out of the planet and out of the, the human resources for the benefit of just a handful of people. We want to restore balance where each individual is able to access his or her personal value, personal wealth, if you will. And we all have a wealth, an absolute wealth of potential. Every single one of us has the ability to heal and to be healed, to come out of the dream, which is often a nightmare, and create a reality that benefits everyone, especially everyone that chooses to be compassionate that chooses to be loving, that chooses to become whole. This is a holistic paradigm that we're entering. And we're entering it with great hope and great expectation that we will finally get, be able to get past and, and overcome the imbalances and the injustices that have existed on our world because we were out of sorts within ourselves. It all comes from human consciousness. I want you to see that. We can end the games. We can end the corruption. We can end the injustices. Let's focus together on healing the planet. And know that it begins by healing ourselves. Thank you for listening. Namaste.